Hello and welcome to Web of Light. I am Dr. Kevin and I am here with my co-host Lori Powers Otto. Yay, you got it right. <laughs> Uh, and this is going to be a very interesting show. This is our Time of Gemini show. Um, but we have at the Time of Gemini, and we also have some, uh, a, a few different big announcements. Yes. Uh, you're going to be watching this, and this is actually uh, closing out our second year. Wow. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. Thanks. Well, you know, June was, our, was when we began Web of Light. Um, and we began Web of Light. It was Angie Dianju and I started Web of Light. Uh, we started it with our Web of Light astrologer, Dorothy Morgan, who is here today. Yes. Dorothy, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Dorothy has been delivering great astrology for us for two years. Yes. Uh, Angie, due to some personal issues, had to back out near the end of the first year. Uh, and we've been doing some pop co-hosting uh, where we've had a, a round of different co-hosts coming in. But that's always fun. That's always fun. Right. You know, the different energies, different things. Um, so I wanted to start today's quote before we get into the astrology with the only constant is change. Yes. Yes. Herculates said that. He said it, it comes out of a much longer, I read the longer one. I almost brought in the longer one to read because it's actually very interesting and it's quite spiritual. And of course, it was written in like 433 BC. Isn't that amazing? Or something. Yeah, you know, a very interesting perspective about change and, the, you know, um, how change brings us down into the deeper parts of ourselves and mm -hmm. rises us up into the higher parts of the sky. And I'm not doing the actual quote, but that was the essence of the right, fuller right. quote. Right, right. That yeah, was bigger. Yeah, and that's, that's Uranus yeah. and the energy of that and what's currently happening. For many of you who saw the last, you know, three or four shows, uh, I want to thank Lori for hosting thank, for me. Thank you for giving me that honor. We, uh, I want to officially announce that we are going to be doing, for the most part, a summer hiatus here at Web of Light. We're going to take a couple of months off, uh, though there will still be the astrology show, and that's also some news. Um, but I want to start by the first change, which is uh, basically officially, we're going to call it officially when we come back in September. Um, Lori is now my... my Permanent co-host till she gets tired of me. Everybody gets tired of me. Oh, uh, you know I love you. Come on. It's good. Thank you. My little cancer <laughs> is hot. Oh. <laughs> Can't uh, see that you ever did theater. <laughs> um, if I didn't do theater better than that, I never would have been invited back. Um, so our first, our first change uh, is that instead of having revolving co-hosts, Except for the occasional Lori or I need to be off, and we will bring in a co a guest right, host right. at that point. Thank but you. We're excited about having you as I'm a permanent part of the team. I'm super excited. Yeah. I really am. Yeah. I love this show. I mean, it's been awesome, so yeah. I'm glad to be part of it. And with great um, sadness but understanding, this is going to be our Web of Light astrologer, Dorothy Morgan's last astrology show. Mm -hmm. You are moving on to other things. We're not going to delve into those, but I know that the world is taking you into different places. Yes. I'm still being an astrologer, though. Yeah. Yep. Still. You still find me, and I'm still around, and I'm not going anywhere. Yep. Just mm -hmm. some shifts going on. Yes. And yes. So I wanted to do that, um, kind of say that up front. And We're going to miss you. It's been an honor. I, I, I yeah. love doing TV show. I love yeah. it. It's so much fun. And, That's you know, great. who knows, every now and then, maybe you'll come back and do a special for us or something. Yeah. Um, I do also want to announce that we have, uh, starting with the astrology for the time of cancer, we're going to have Martha Clark. I don't know if you know Martha or not. She um, is a recent import, pretty much, into the U.S. She's from mm -hmm. Dublin, Ireland. Oh, nice. nice. So she has been uh, studying astrology and doing astrology uh, for about 20 years in Europe. Oh. Fantastic. We've been studying over there and doing that. Uh, so she's also an international uh, award-winning photographer. Oh, wow. Beautiful. So creative. As it's much awesome. as, yeah, as much as we are sad to see Dorothy go, we are looking forward to having Martha come in and yes. bring in a different view of astrology. Mm -hmm. 
fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And she is a triple Gemini. Yeah. <laughs> How do you get this? I swear. <laughs> it's, you know, it's really interesting because Clark is my mother's maiden name. Oh. Wow. <laughs> and, you know, we're from there, from Ireland. Relatives. Yeah. I like it. Probably distant relatives. Probably distant relatives. <laughs> it is an island, you know. <laughs> right? That's it. Well, I, when I looked and I saw that she was a triple Gemini and we've been, we uh, have been talking and, you know, figuring out how to make things work, I was like, I'm just going to wait and spring that on Dorothy on the show. <laughs> That's awesome. For those of you who don't remember, Dorothy is a Gemini. Mm -hmm. um, Angie was a Gemini. And what, what sign are you? Aquarius. An Aquarius. An Another air, air. It's an air sign, yeah. I bring in all these air signs. It's all right. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of like carbonation for my water. Sure. There you go. <laughs> See? Well, it depends on the yeah. level because that's what we tend to do in our own charts and is we, we bring in what we don't have, what we may have a deficit of because not everybody is perfect because... Every other, all the planets are in certain zodiac signs and they have elements. And so the biggest thing is, is um, if we are deficient in something, and I, I don't remember the balance of your elements, but yeah, if you bring in an air, it just helps you to well, fill, in, and fill in something that's missing maybe. <laughs> it's not, it's a negative thing, it's just there. That bothers yeah. my mind because I've surrounded myself with Scorpio, the one sign I'm not supposed to be with. And, and it, that's, that's everybody a, important in my family is Scorpio. Well, so that well, then that's not daughter. true that you're She's not supposed Leo. to be with it. <laughs> oh, right. I never yeah. believed that, but people yeah. always tell me that. And that's a that's a, a misunderstanding because of pop astrology. You know, you're a zodiac sun sign, right? And everybody goes, well, what sign should I be with? It's like it depends on everything. Right. Yep. It is Absolutely. not just one thing. And even when um, there are difficult connections between two people because we've done stuff on synastry charts they're called synastry even when there's difficult connections between two people that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be together it means you have things to work on i mean it's right. okay for everything to run smoothly but the way we really grow is through right pushing beyond our comfort zones and that's what difficult aspects do and that's what we get I wouldn't and, change him for anything. Yeah, yeah. and my, I, I'm, a, I'm a signature Scorpio. I have a, See, I a, Scorpio. a lot of, a, a lot of <laughs> underlying Scorpio energy. Yes. So, yeah. uh, so it's very interesting. Now, I missed the last astrology show, which is in the two years you've been doing it, the only one I've ever missed. Yes. Um, was it strange to not have me here or relieving? It was, it was different. <laughs> Yes, it was different. We had a party. It was good, though. I mean, it was a good show, but oh, it I'm was sure. definitely different. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. So I'm glad you're here for this one. So, but what I what I I've heard through the grapevine is, you know, just four days ago, four or five days ago, because we're just into this is the first day of Gemini. We're taping this on, so it's actually normally we try to get it out just before the sign, but we're getting out a few days into the sign. Uh, because of me needing to be away, right, right. Uh, we kind of, our schedules got off. But May 15th was yeah. a big day. Yes. I know you talked about it some on the other show, but we're starting to feel, a, feel it now and coming into it. Yes. So let's start, let's start with May 15th and then segue right. into the time of Gemini. Okay, we can do that. So on May 15th, I'm going to give you the astrology of it and then we'll discuss what it means. So don't glaze over yet. <laughs> Um, the plan uh, I know oh. <laughs> the planet Uranus moved into the sign of Taurus. He's not been in that sign since 1940s, right? Wow. Um, so it's an 82-year cycle. And on May 15th, we had the new moon in Taurus. So new moons are about setting goals in Taurus, same sign as where Uranus just moved in. Also on that day, the planet Mars moved into Aquarius, where he's going to remain there for... Uh, five, almost five months, which is a lot longer because he's going to retrograde in that period. And um, later that night, early on the 16th of May, Mars made its first of three square angles to Uranus. And the two planets in the astrology chart that can create the most um, sudden, unexpected change so it's good you opened with that quote is an aspect between Mars and Uranus. It's, it's volatile, it's stressful, it is super sudden, unexpected shifts that happen. Something even from outside us, it can happen. 
Um, the volcano started erupting in Hawaii right around that time. It didn't have to be the exact moment in time because these things, uh, Uranus is a slow moving planet and uh, he never um, misses a spot because we all know of retrograde planets, right? Every, we've talked about that before, and I got a thing on my YouTube channel. If you want to check it out, you can. It's on the on the retrogrades this year. But Uranus moves forward so many numbers, stops, and goes back all the way to where he was before, and then he, he makes a, a leap forward. But then he comes all the way back. He retraces every single step. Unlike other planets where they retrograde, whew, go way further, then retrograde, go way further, retrograde. So Uranus is really digs in. And so when this transits, all of these transits happen just on that day, wherever it is in your chart is important to know because if you don't know already, but the deepest things will be shifting. I mean, the rumblings from below, just like the example of the, earth, the physical Earth, Uranus is in charge of weather. And this is a phenomenon that happens on the planet where volcanoes erupt. So the shifts, all of this is going on. So we have that on May 15th. We also have Mars, Uranus squaring when they're both retrograde, August 1st. And then we also have it September 17th. They come within a day. September 17th when they're both in the direct motion again. And it all happens in this fi these fixed signs that the two planets are in. So where things are really stuck, 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 just like tectonic plates. I kind of explained that before many times. And then finally they shift, causes earthquakes, causes volcanoes. What's going on in here? So even if you don't have a personal big change happening, you can see it around you. You can still stay in your space of ohm and calmness and it can be going on around you and sometimes you can get drawn into it and not. So just know that these changes are to break us out of patterns that we get stuck in. Uranus is the, he, he creates freedom. He, crea he creates change so we can experience life in another way. So it's just, it's incredibly difficult for some people to deal with the biggest changes that are happening in their life. And so that's why I would say, and people are always sitting with me, and you know, you guys are both readers. It's like the one thing they don't like is the change. No one likes change, and that is the absolute only consistent thing that we can ever count on. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, so. it's gonna hit me in the sixth house, I'm pretty sure. I'm doing the math in my head yeah. right now, but it kind of depends. Yeah, it's early Taurus. Yeah, so yeah. it's going to be hitting me in the sixth house. So it is, yeah. It's there now. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and Uranus really makes sure we get those, we get that message. Well, you know, the imagery that I got when she was talking about Uranus is the car that runs you over and then backs up to make sure it did it again. Oh. Yeah. And then it goes forward over yeah. you one more time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, use it also, because yeah. in that, and we get nervous about those things and, and fearful, and, and it's understandable. We're only human, and <clears throat> many of us don't understand, don't like, just don't like change. But just know that we're where we're supposed to be, just have to breathe into it and just trust that, you know, life is safe. It takes a little bit sometimes yeah. and a lot of work. Well, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also spin this just a little mm -hmm. because even as I, as I said that, I realized that I was unintentionally feeding the fear aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then the same analogy, uh, the same thing could be described with a different analogy, which is it's a lump of pie crust dough mm. and you're doing that roller yeah. so you can roll it out, oh, stretch way. it and make it so that you can create something fabulous. Right, right. I love homemade pie crust. Mm, who doesn't? I as long as you don't run it, it over years. too much, it's nice and flaky. Yeah. Right. Yep. But, Perfect. But yeah. three times is enough to get out the lumps and to right. kind of, you know, get it, get, get it so that it's smooth and mm -hmm. shapeable and manageable and it's mm -hmm. as big as you need it to be. So I want the listener out there to know that what's coming up is an opportunity for you to smooth out some 
chunky lumps in your life. Sure. There you go. Yeah. Things that aren't necessarily working. Mm -hmm. And you go with it and you're the pie dough that's being reshaped to have a better shape, to be a better form, to carry more goodness within you. Yeah. yeah. Or if you fight it, you're the, you're the one getting hit by the car. Right. Yeah. Exactly. The choice is yours. Yeah. Yeah. You it, go, it always you is, too. With and it some people will, it. and we know that there are situations in life when, when we look at stuff and it's like, but that's, the truth is the truth. And, and okay, but we can still find whatever the blessing is. Absolutely everything is a lesson. So it's like, well, so what, what have I learned about this? Do I handle something differently now? Or whatever it is. We don't have to make it such, you know, a bad lesson. It's just a lesson. You know, how can I use this? And for people who have been feeling very stuck, I had a client yesterday that was, uh, she goes out of the blue all of a sudden on uh, Tuesday, because this was when it was, was Wednesday, was that Tuesday? Let me second. Yeah, it was Tuesday. Uh, last Tuesday, the 15th. All of a sudden, out of the blue, she just broke up with her longtime boyfriend. They lived together and everything. And she was like um, very devastated with herself, but she knew it was the right thing, but she knew it was coming. And she goes, nothing caused that. We weren't having an argument. She goes, I was brushing my teeth, and I was just turned around and finally just said what I needed to say, and it's over. And that's it. Wow. And so that is uh, Uranian. That's all of this astrology playing itself out because she had gotten to a point, the relationship has gotten to a point where it's not moving where she wanted it to go. And she finally had enough. And it wasn't even yelling like I had enough. It was just, it came from such a calm place. I mean, she's upset. It's not her preference, but it's the right thing. So sometimes courage just comes through to make that change. The hard choices. Yeah. And, and it's, it's all right to let those things happen. It's not an excuse to be a jerk, but if, <laughs> but it is, if you're feeling impulsive about things, there's a reason for it. Right. Well, you know, in my experience, um, people that are jerks usually don't need excuses to be jerks. <laughs> oh, good point. <laughs> <laughs> They're just jerks. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they just yeah. choose to be. Yeah. <laughs> I get, well, this is coming from, I guess I'm not a jerk because this is coming from me thinking that, well, all right, maybe if I'm going to be jerky and it's like, yeah, I'm not usually that way. Yeah, so, it's... yeah, you're right. <laughs> Good point, Kevin. <laughs> yes. You know, there's beef jerky, there's chicken jerky, <laughs> and then there's just a turkey who's a jerky. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Ah. And so yep. this is a really good example now that we're in Gemini. And that started May 20th at 10:15 uh, p.m. East Coast. And this is a really good example of what Gemini is about. It's about having a conversation, talking stuff out, and really feeling the way you're talking. And not that Gemini is overly feeling, because it's actually a lot of thinking, but it's also creating ideas and talking to you about something and then you interject and then that gives us more things to talk about because Gemini is the first mutable air sign. It's the mutable sign of spring which means the next sign we're getting ready is we're getting ready for the next season. And so when we have this beautiful energy, the sun in Gemini, I love this time of year, you know, I am a Gemini and so to me this is just Everything is in bloom finally here in New yeah. England. Our finally. plants right now in New England are still like they should have been a month ago. We've had such right. a cool spring. They're still, are, are we sure? I know. <laughs> I know. Is it safe? Is it safe to it say? Safe? I know. It really feels that way, doesn't it? Snowstorm this weekend, you heard, right? <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise any of us. Right? We didn't even react to that. Right? right. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> So when the sun moved into, uh, into Gemini, these, this, so you guys got to see an example of, of how Gemini works. And sometimes Gemini can be so active, depends on where it is in your chart and the people around you, but sometimes Gemini can be so active that they never stop to listen. So it's important that people um, either listen, have an opportunity to talk, communicate. Those are all the important things. And right off the bat, the first aspect that we got was the sun making a trine aspect to Mars. And we always mention the faster moving planet first. And Mars, 
just five days ago was in that square to Uranus. So when Mars made that square to Uranus, when any planets interact with each other, the faster moving planet, it's kind of like playing tag your it or duck, duck, <laughs> goose, right? You know, it's one of those yeah. things. So Mars in Aquarius, I'll talk about, yeah, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, when it moves through the aspect with Uranus, it picks up some of those freedom loving energies of Uranus. It gets a little whisper in the ear from Uranus, right? And Mars is in Uranus's natural sign now. That's why this is even more important. So Mars is carrying the, is being himself, which is the game changer, the person, the energy who is all about shifting um, by just taking action. It's always about just taking action, taking action. Well, now he's wearing the clothes of Aquarius or flying the freak flag, if you will, because it's about <laughs> being different. Yes. And stepping again into places that we're not used to being. Because for a lot of people, if you don't have any Aquarius in your chart or not accustomed to it, you don't want to get out of your comfort zone. So the sun now on the 20th has made his connection to Mars. So the sun actually got to pick up a little, a few notes from Mars and Aquarius. He's only been in there a few days, but he's still got some info for the sun. So he picked up that. So this is an air trine, which gives us, I'm thinking about this and I'm doing all these little things, but now what's the bigger picture? Because Aquarius is all about that bigger picture. And so this is, just, this is the, the, the sun and Mars trining. Correct. There's nothing, that, but there's no other, there's not a third part to the trine, is there? Not yet. But it's coming. Yeah, it'll be here. Okay, um, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, um, <laughs> I can feel it coming. When it comes through, <laughs> I didn't speak about it because um, really the only time when it actually comes through uh, to make the grand trine, I've got it in my daily forecast because I do, a, you know, mm -hmm. I do a daily forecast on my YouTube channel on um, the 24th of May. Uh, 24th, it, yeah, is when it hits because that's when the moon completes, it's called a grand trine. It's, yep. So it's all four positions of the air element. Our planets are there and they're connected. And so the moon in Libra will do that in the morning on Thursday the 24th. And yeah, Thursday the 24th, which around between 8 and 9 a.m. East Coast time. And so that is incredible for promoting ideas, brainstorming, whenever anything's in the sign of Aquarius, you have opportunities, again, to, I'm going to repeat myself a lot, but break into new ideas. Just open your mind up to new things that are just like so freedom. They feel like so much like freedom so we can get out of what we've been doing before. So on the 24th, starting at what you say, nine in the morning? Yeah, it's eight. It starts at 819 is the exact aspect, which means for a couple of hours before that, the moon is mm. really applying pressure because the moon moves one degree every two hours. And so, you know, I mean, all night, all morning on the 24th, but the exact aspect is 819. Yeah, in the morning. So, so, you know, get up early, get out and have a great walk Thursday morning and just, um, and just really get inspired to do stuff. So that's a really nice uh, grand trine in air. So we gotta love it. And that energy will last for how long? It will just be there and then just the day. It'll be there for the day and then it will go away. But what happens is it's just like making soup or cooking. I like to think of soup because you know, once you put something in soup, you know, it's like adding the spice. It's like really try and get that back out. You can't. Yeah. So it's there. It's there. It's been impregnated with the energy of thinking and creating all kinds of thoughts and ideas. It's now, beautiful. Nice. And remind people, because the moon is obviously our fastest moving thing. Yes. That it gets, and it's in each sign. About how long? Two and a half days. So, so kind of two and a half days. Going into Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. Yes. Going to Memorial Day weekend, which I think is an interesting play out. Yeah, the moon enters Scorpio that weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First so you thing put in the, the spice in, and then you serve, and, and then the arsenic, <laughs> and then you serve it. <laughs> Watch. You want to be careful of those Monday barbecues. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But yes. so, but with this, and again, you know, I'm, I'm, I, from the listener's perspective. 
you have two and a half days of full of great ideas, great time to do meetings, great time to do stuff. But then this grand time is going to show up again in a month. In 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 um, uh, when it hits, well, not so specific, but when it hits the next air sign, right? No, because then that empty. Oh space oh will oh yeah yeah yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Not and then by then ahead. and then by then the sun will have already moved on. Will it? Okay. Yep. So this is it. This is it. Yeah. This is it for this configuration. So yeah. 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 It won't happen again. Okay. Until a couple of years from now when Mars is in Aquarius again. So in these early, early degrees, because the sun won't be in Gemini the next time Mars, because Mars goes all the way back when it retrogrades, it does come back to some of the, er to the early degree of Aquarius, but the, but the sun has already moved beyond Gemini. Because of that. Yeah, everything's it's like a moving but, target. But, but, you, but Uranus <laughs> will still be in Aquarius when it happens again in Taurus. Two, yes. In Taurus. Yes. So it will still I know. <laughs> All these signs <laughs> get confusing. <laughs> okay, keep going. I, I hear myself after. Anyways, yes. Sometimes I, I record stuff and then I listen to it when I'm editing it and it's like, oh my God, I call the moon he? How did I do that? It's a she. The moon is as feminine as it gets, but it's in a masculine sign. So I kind of like, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to correct that. <laughs> it's transgender. Too funny. Yeah. I know. Everything is. That's Uranus. It, you know, that's Uranus moving into Venus, into, into Venus, not into Venus, but into Venus is sign Taurus. That is, we have this now. This is what, why the world is, is seeing an influx of this. Not that it wasn't there before, but it is. There's more of people, you know, whatever our sexual orientation, our physical gender, it's just all getting blurry, a blurry line now. I mean, you could clearly know who you are, and that's fine, but the acceptance of it is, is starting to change. And while Uranus is in Taurus for the next, it'll be almost eight years before he leaves, these are opportunities, these are, this is how our world is changing in a big way. Where we're allowing um, people the uniqueness to come out. And eventually yes. it won't be unique, it'll be the norm. Right. People will ask. So, and you said it's every 81 years. Yeah, that 80, it, that yeah by 82 to 84. It takes a little while, it's off just a little bit here and there. Yeah. But. So, you know, we're talking the mid 30s, just before the 40s. It we're was, talking about the. It was 1938 30s, to 1938, 39, 40, 40, 44. So it was pre World War II and during World War II. It was just after the stock market crash, his finances, things Which like was that. when it was in Aries making a correction. Yeah. So then it made its correction. In but Taurus, yeah. this, was, this was the time of. Sally Bowles and the cafes and oh, was it? Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, you, you know the lives of the cabaret, the okay. musical cabaret. Oh yes. You know, but it was the time when you were having a lot of play with gender oh, in yes. cafes and singers and oh. It, yeah. Oh my God. This is why it's so this, we're here now. Yeah, we're we're here now. now. It's not just theater. Yeah. Well, yeah, and but there was a there was a Big, there was a big move okay. in, in, back then, uh, I, and more fluidity for that period in yeah. gender um, from yeah. what it had been, which had been very, very, um, you know, strict, very constipated. Yeah, yes. oh, yeah. And you know, and oh, then good. Jupiter's in Scorpio, so we can help with that elimination process. <laughs> <laughs> We'll blow it right out. Oh, yeah. Anyways, let's move on. Keep on That's going. Really good. I love it. So on the 23rd, on the 23rd, there's a lot going on the first week or so at Gemini, and after that it kind of peters out, but that's okay. Let's see. On the 23rd, Mercury in Taurus, which is uh, methodical. Mercury's not really a fan of being in Taurus because he rules Gemini. He's like, oh, my God, I'm almost home. I'm exhausted. I'm almost in my own sign. But then he's opposite Jupiter and Scorpio. So that creates an opportunity for us to uh, slow down a little bit if we're feeling a bit hyper because all of this air trying, again, we're communicating so fast, but the ruler of one of the air signs is in really slow Taurus. So we might have a tug of war. We might be getting overwhelmed with information in one way and still sitting there tapping our foot, waiting for something else to happen, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's a little bipolar sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Take good notes, journal a lot. Yeah. Take good notes and journal a lot. Yeah, yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. And so that's really what we got going on there. So let's move on because a little further, and this we can talk about this for a little bit. Jupiter makes, this is one of the nicest aspects. This is the second one of the year. Jupiter makes a trine aspect to Neptune. Now Jupiter is in Scorpio and all about digging in deep, deep motions, really understanding where we're coming from. You know, if you feel like taking that shamanic journey or just taking yourself a weekend and going into the woods and just, just to discover yourself, things that are just a little out of norm for you, but you know it's about deepening your mm -hmm. understanding with yourself, this is a beautiful, beautiful opportunity. And that is Memorial Weekend. So if you can have some extra time off is when this is exact. It lasts for a few weeks though. So, and it, the connection it makes to Neptune is a trine, and Neptune's in Pisces. So this is such a sweet, sweet aspect. It is beautiful. It is comforting. It's like taking a deep breath after a rainstorm. It's just what we need because there has been so much stress with some of the harsher things we've just been talking about that... Um, this aspect is sort of, it's humming in the background, if you will. And it, this, this energy, if we allow it, can come to the front, even with all the stresses that we have going on, even with our minds being really busy. And this is another way to use this too, even with our minds being super busy and us doing all these great problem solving, it's really about trusting your intuition and what your gut feelings are and really sticking with that because if we're in the head too much, that's fine, yeah. <laughs> but if we're in the head too much, then we're not in the heart and in the emotions and trusting our feelings. So there's this incredible balancing act that has to happen. And how long is this period for? This will go for weeks. Okay. Weeks and weeks. Jupiter, actually Jupiter and Neptune aren't really, I'm gonna look at my ephemeris to get you a really good answer. But Jupiter and Neptune, don't go that, they are actually really connected until, Jupiter gets cranking forward again, so really through September. I mean, this is two of three exact aspects, but in the meantime, just know that for the most part now until September, they'll be really near each other, so they won't separate that far. So we're going to have, this is the best aspect of the year between these two nice. things. It's the summer of psychic love. I like, <laughs> it. I like it. It's wonderful. Summer of psychic love. I it, but it's a wonderful opportunity. And, and but it's also the eye of the storm. Because when we get on the other side of it, go I ahead. Know, I know. <laughs> I know. And Martha will be reporting on those things. But, you know, when, when Mars retrogrades, when Venus retrogrades later in the year, those are really important aspects. Yeah. So they will, uh, I'm sure she'll fill you in on those mm -hmm. things when the time comes. So with this, uh, with this, we, this is a great opportunity to connect to your higher self, learn meditation, do meditation, get near the water. I mean, anything like this. What do you guys, what would you do with this? Because to me, I mean, let's give people some ideas because this is like the biggest thing that's going on for the year, honestly, as far as how we can get into sync with things. Well, interestingly enough, because it starts just before my husband's birthday, just birthday's June 2nd, yep. and it goes right over my birthday. Yep. So yeah. I think, you know, but we, we just made an offer on a house. This is all going to be going on as we're moving into yeah. a house, which I think is probably really good energy for it, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So interestingly, uh, for us, it's going to be going through all of our stuff, letting go of stuff we don't need anymore, diving into stuff, mm. and to really be creating the sacred space that we want to create. Right. Yeah. Right. You know. Fantastic. You've, you've been to our place. Yes. Uh, you actually have not been to our place, no. but it's so small, and in a very small place, we have three full altars set up. Wow. They do. In 861 square feet, and the house that we've just made the offer on is like, 1,861 square feet. So they'll be able to spread out a little bit. You might be able to just a wee bit, huh? <laughs> just a little That's bit. That's a Jupiter transit. But see, let's, let's spread out our home. It looks like a lot in your small space, but when you get into your new space, you're going to be like, oh man, now we got to buy stuff. Well, okay, so I, I have to put this, and this is, the, this is Jupiter loving me here. 
Um, a very good friend of mine is having a house built and she's looking to move in in September and she doesn't want to take any of her really good quality stuff with her. Wow, nice. So she oh, has yeah. offered to donate to us anything that we need oh, wonderful. from one house to the other and she's got some great That's stuff. Wonderful. So we're going to get our yeah, stuff wonderful. set in. Yes. And then see what fantastic. Yeah. That and then awesome. suddenly it's going to be like, okay, so what do you need? Come down. You know what you have. See what you need. Let's load up the truck and bring it down. Nice. Oh, very, it. very I nice. I love it. Yeah. Oh, what, so what do you think that you and Bruce will do? Well, we're, we've been this whole year in a state of getting rid of what no longer serves us. Yeah. But now we're at the, the time of filling back in. Mm -hmm. So like planting our gardens, spending more time in nature. We spend a lot of time. We have a space in our yard. We call it our secret garden. I it's love it. protected from the elements. Oh. So we sit out there, even in the dead of winter, we'll sit out there in shorts and bare feet because the sun hits you and you're just warm and it's peaceful. Oh, and I love it. So that. we spend Sounds a lot great. of time out there, more time outside, more time just connecting <sighs> the two of us. We spend a lot of time together, but we, 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 we enjoy each other, so we want to yeah. do more to get to know each other. Oh, and it sounds like it's a perfect time to go deeper within yourself. It is. And, you know, go deeper within yourself, but also with your partner or, yeah. you know, and develop that connection even better. And that's is. what our plan is anyway. That's a beautiful way <laughs> to use it. So one of the things that we have going on um, is Venus, talking about grand trines again. This is a water trine, all right? So it's all about our emotions and how we feel and connecting. Venus connects and fills in a grand trine, and, but she does it on June 1st and 2nd. So I'm jumping a little ahead, but that's hey, all right. Jeff's birthday. Yeah. yeah. So there is a grand trine in water for the year for people who have a birthday on that day. So this, it's called the solar return chart. Um, but this grand trine in water is, is fantastic. So bringing it all home, bringing it home and having... You know, whether you're physically working and talking and, and working at, on, at or on a home, creating a home, or if that's not part of your current life situation, it can also be about how you're connecting with the emotions of your family, because Cancer's family. And Venus is the faster moving planet in, in this configuration. So she's only going to be there a couple days, bang, done. But it's still the energy of what's going on. And again, for, especially for Jeff, since that's his, his birthday, that means he's got that configuration in the solar return chart for the year. So this is wonderful, wonderful for you So guys. Venus is in Cancer. Venus will be in Cancer on June 2nd and 1st and, and 2nd, yeah. what's the other two parts of it? Uh, um, Jupiter in Scorpio and Neptune in Pisces. Oh. So be grand trying there. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I love it. I mean, we really, so this weekend, it's, it's really good to just, you know, breathe into things and just really enjoy it, really enjoy it. So, but then, before the exact <laughs> trine, Venus is in an opposition to Saturn and Saturn and Capricorn. So this, what happens with this Saturn and Capricorn is about, you know, wherever Saturn is moving, it's about getting rid of the excess. It contracts things. So while we're in La La Land in our brains with all the air, with the air trying going on a few days before this, and then we're in our, our motions and just sort of floating off in space with the, with all the, the water stuff, then there's Saturn comes in and kind of is like the tether. It's, which is <laughs> fine because otherwise we would just be sailing off into space. Right. We need something that will ground us and so Venus triggering the opposition to Saturn just before she gets into the grand trine in water is fantastic. It's like we're adding helium to a balloon or actually think of the hot air balloons, you know, hot air, hot air, hot air. The balloon goes higher and higher, but you know, the weather's pretty bad, so you got to keep the tether on. So it's there, but you, and that's Saturn. It's going to help us keep all of that good information, all of the good things really, really grounded. So where you are having Saturn transit right now in that end of Cap the early part of Capricorn is super important. Helps you get all that great information and all that emotional stuff and thoughts and it, you can bring it down into reality. Really helpful. Nice. I'm really liking this first few. Uh, it sounds like an exciting time to me. I'm yeah. really looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, these first few weeks of, um, well, the first week or two of Gemini is just really wonderful like that. 
So big astrology conference going on out in Chicago. We have our, this conference about once every six years and it's going on this week, that weekend. So unfortunately I'm unable to go, but um, they picked it on purpose. So nice. the astrologers yeah. knew what to do to bring everybody together. Thousands of people from all over the world will be there. So that's what we have there. All right, a lot going on, which is wonderful. Then we have May 29th, the full moon in Sagittarius. It's fun, it's lively, it's energetic just party. It's a great, it's, it's just great to get out there. It is on Tuesday after Memorial Day. So a lot of people take a whole week off because it's kind of like you get a free day, vacation day because it's a paid holiday for some people. So it's just, it's, it's fun. The full moon in Sag is always just carefree, fun, energetic. Just get out there, just go do something you haven't done before and just have some fun. It's a good Laurie, day. Yes. What's a paid holiday? I'm What's not a, really sure. I don't, I don't really know what a paid holiday is. <laughs> I don't either. I, I think we've worked for ourselves too, too long. long. <laughs> paid holiday is... is for those who get it. <laughs> paid holiday is... All right, do I have some money tucked in an envelope somewhere so I don't have to work today? Oh, that's what that <laughs> that's is. That's what it is. It's when you yeah. snuck some money into an envelope. It's like, I'll save that for another day. <laughs> it's when you check your lingerie draw. <laughs> right? I know I got $10 somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, June 1st, Mercury, Mercury does enter Gemini by now. I didn't actually tell you when he entered Gemini. Um, but the point is, on Friday, June 1st, Mercury makes a trine aspect to Uranus. So he is part of that now, which is really good. So he pulls in, so which means he is also making a trine aspect. No, he's not making a trine aspect. Who's making two? Hold on, hold on. No, no Libra. <laughs> I confused myself. <laughs> Never mind. Ge Mercury and Gemini is making a trine aspect to Mars and Aquarius. And so, again, more thinking. This is more air energy. It's just like really winding us up. I was thinking of the sun because he's coming to conjunct the sun soon. Because actually Mercury moves faster than the sun. Mm. Yeah. He's, in, he's, number, he's number two in line. It's the moon, Mercury, mm. Venus, then the sun. But... In all of the books, they always put the sun first because, well, he's the center of the solar system. And he has to have that. So then on the 6th, Mercury makes a square to Neptune. So this is fast-moving energy on June 6th. So we have to stay on our toes with that because Mercury in Gemini, he's cruising along. He'll be out of this sign in less than two weeks. He's moving so fast right now. It's because he's... He's, he's caught up with the sun, and the sun is getting ready to slingshot him out. So he's moving really fast because of the gravity of it. Right, right. And so while that happens, with him connecting to Neptune, you know, Neptune, that, that watery energy grand trine we had going on earlier? Yep. Yeah. This, is gonna, this, this will help us to just, like, grab a couple ideas out of whatever we felt then and just move on. It's really fast, so trust your instincts on that day. Excellent. And that's yeah. June sixth. June sixth. Listen. To She's saying on, on on the rest of the days, don't trust your instincts. But on that day, <laughs> <laughs> always trust your instincts, <laughs> you, especially that day. <laughs> Thank you. Especially that day. You uh, need to you need to clean on the fifth. You need to use good Q-tips on your ears because your instincts are going to be talking to you more than yeah. normal on that day. As long as you so can it's going to be something. harder for you to ignore it. But you can. I, I have confidence you can pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think so too. I think so too. So it is just a, it's good energy. So I got two little things left here for us for the month. So the new moon at 22 degrees of Gemini is on June 13th. That's Flag Day usually. Wow. I don't know why it's Flag Day. <laughs> Think of the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> and they do our flags by shell. Yeah, shell yes, and flag yeah, by shell. Whatever it's called, I can't yeah. remember now. <laughs> so that new moon on Wednesday, um, June 13th, is uh, when we have those new moons, it's about setting goals again, right? So every month we have a fresh opportunity to set new goals based on our new wants and needs. And since it's Gemini, it's all about... Um, Gemini things, which is communicating better with people, clearing up misunderstandings, maybe listening better, uh, you know, putting down, you know, on your paper, I, I'll practice, you know, more attention, more present moment, more attention, better listening, things like that. Um, it also has a lot to do with our neighborhood. So if you have a neighborhood clean up, 
you know, whatever it is, you know, it's all about just really local community, nice. local community, nice. and staying really in, uh, in, in touch with your energy. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you to work. We've got a few more uh -oh. minutes. You said you only had two of the little things. You get yep. one more thing, or we, we're, we're done on your sheet? Hold on. <laughs> we're done on the first page. Let me flip. Let, let's, let's see, because then I want to ask you a question with your daily guide. June 14th. There we go. And then you ask. June 14th, Venus squares Uranus. Um, so Venus is in Leo. This, because she moved into Leo on the 13th. So the day that we had the new moon, Venus entered Leo. Venus and Leo is really a showman, show woman. She wants attention. When we have that, when we have Venus and Leo, we are all looking for that attention in our love relationships. Mm -hmm. And if it's not even about love relationships, because that's not for everybody, right? It should be, right? We should all have somebody we love. Right. But it's also can be finances where we would uh, buy things that make us feel good, make us feel pretty, something because we want to get attention. So when Venus does that and then she squares Uranus, that's just quirky as all get out. So this is pretty interesting because Uranus, the Uranus in Taurus and Venus squares and Venus is in Leo. All of this energy, it's fixed and it is about oh, just different. It's different. We, we need to do something different in the way we approach love and how we're spending money. It's quite a unique, it's fun. You got to look it's on a, your it's face. It's a fun shakeup. It's a, it's a fun shakeup, but all I can imagine is somebody coming home that has had the same hairstyle for 20 years and they come home with a with a pink hair bob after having a conservative chagon for yeah. you know I or think something. that would be Perfect. Yeah, 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 you know, that would be a great way because right. how we look. I love it. Yeah, everybody should do attention. that. You know, everybody should do that. Something, well, you know, pink something, is, pink something is not quirky like color. that. Yeah, yeah. Not, not but it's quirky. Not that exact yeah. thing, but, but something but quirky. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was, I'm, the look on my face was the imagery of <laughs> what, right. what, what could show up on that day. It's like quirky, it's yes. edgy. If we're not paying attention, something can just like spin us off our axis really fast. So Bruce should expect me to come home with a new tattoo. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, but see, that's just an additional ta tattoo. That would be I, really I don't have quirky. Any. I don't have any. You yet. don't have any? Not I yet. You had one. No. So I have to oh, get it done. Oh, right? Well, there you go. Well, now you know your, your tattoo day. So All right. you open up your daily planetary guide uh, because I'm going to pick your brain while you're still here since we get a couple of minutes, to July 15th. What's July 15th? What day of the week is it? It's a Sunday. Okay, so let's look at the 16th then. So that would be a Monday. Okay, so we're looking that should everything go right, we have to pick a closing date on the house, which is when we uh, do ah. it. So July, so, you know, I would either look at like the Friday before the 15th or the Monday, Tuesday after the 15th. And I want people to pay attention to what I'm doing here, which is my husband and I are making a, have made a major life decision. And just like when we got married and other things, we're talking to our astrologer to see which day would be a better day and why because the day that you take ownership of the house and sign the paperwork creates a chart for your home. Yep. Whether you realize it or not, you have one. Yes. So, so she helped you pick the 28th of not yet. October? Not yet. It wasn't just because that's my anniversary? Yeah. Uh, uh, she helped us pick the time. <laughs> We got limited by the date. She only had two or three choices. Right. And the, th the thing is, it's like, this is called an electional chart. And the way we would actually do it is, uh, I say we, it's just me. The way I would do it is you, we have to look at the rising sign because the rising sign is the whole ruler of the chart. So if you're moving into, I, I don't have that in my head, like when cancer is rising and that's a home. So, and I would want to see the condition of the moon. So I would try and find that. I'll look up, but it just can't do it in my head. I need the, I need the, uh, the wheel to turn. On uh, Monday, the 16th, the moon is in Virgo. So that's about day-to-day -day activities. But we have some hard aspects to that Mars and Aquarius with all of the Virgo planets that are present. So if we went to uh, Tuesday, the 17th, I just want to, I don't know what time of day Cancer's on the rise. Let me think, let me think. This is Gemini, so we will be in the morning because if Ge Sun's in Gemini rising. No, Sun's going to be in Cancer. <clears throat> this is July 15th. Oh, shoot. 
All right, sun rises around seven. You would need to do this at eight in the morning or something. If we can get the moon, I will tell you times. I'll look it up and email you. But uh, if we can get Cancer rising, that means the moon rules the chart. And the moon on that day at three in the afternoon, though, um, enters the sign of Libra. Otherwise, it's um, in Virgo. We would have to find the best of all charts. I can't just do that. Yeah. without without pulling the chart up and seeing what the rising sign that's why birth time is important or this is an event and it's called electional astrology so we find the best time you, know, you get that moon rise you know you get that moon and if it's a daytime chart then the moon should be below the horizon because the moon is a nighttime planet and and the sun above and the moon below which that would be that way with this chart if we could yep. get early in the morning but if you so, signed early in the morning, the moon would still be in the sign of Virgo, which is fine because Virgo is about what I do day to day. Well, yeah, and my and my um, midheaven is Virgo, so for me okay. that would be appropriate. Appropriate. Yeah. Um, but Libra is a nice energy for Libra's a house. Libra's great, age. exactly, so, because you, you you pairs, you know, so your partners. Yeah. Either either eight o'clock, like doing it at eight o'clock in the morning, because with a because mm -hmm. you're you're likely to still have that. Leftover, and and I know you have to do the exact. I was putting you a little bit on the spot. Yeah, I would have, right. you know, We've but done that before. It's no big deal. <laughs> it's no big deal. She expects it. I keep she her on her toes. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> these are the kind of life decisions that astrology can be very helpful. Yeah, in creating that energy. And like I said, we had to have the wedding based on when Jeff's sister from France could get over. Right, right. So yeah. we only had three or four days, but we we went to Dorothy and we said, what would be the best time? Yeah, and that's when I put out threats to people's lives who tend to run late, like Jeff's mother. <laughs> and guess who was late? You. Not by my own fault. Ah, somebody at the last minute asked me to pick them up and then he wasn't ready. Yeah. He made me late. Oh, so I, didn't, I, I didn't actually hear that part of the story. No, because nobody's asked and I'm not going to rat people out until right now. <laughs> <laughs> and only people that were at my wedding possibly know who she's talking about and then again they may not know i know uh -huh. like well i need to get coffee it's like oh my god you couldn't have made that and you're late and oh so it was yeah. just like one oh i was like oh this stinks <laughs> you didn't really late. miss a whole lot though no i didn't no. but i would have liked to have been down front when everybody was walking in and we, yeah. we, we had to wait for the wedding party to get out of the way to go get our seats because you guys were walking in then yeah but, but anyways, i could wave at you yeah you did <laughs> everybody everybody was deep Deep breathing. <sighs> deep breathing, deep breathing, deep breathing. The nerves were pretty high, <laughs> but I like that. I mean, it's, you know, you can never pick the absolute most perfect chart, but you can pick good charts. You can pick good charts, the best for the situation, because there's all kinds of rulerships. And you learn this in the beginning astrology. When you start studying astrology, if that interests you, you know, and you learn, you've heard me say stuff that's beginner stuff. It's like, okay, well, Mars is in Aquarius, and actually Uranus rules Aquarius, and so they're squaring off, so they're connected. They're connected like three times. And when you look at rulerships, that's what this is, this tells us, is this positive? Is this the energy we're looking for? And if it's not positive, then you just avoid that. And sometimes we just do things and things don't work out. Yep. But anyways. Yeah. So on that note, we are yes. going to start to wrap up. I did want to um, point out one thing that, you know, you said that you're, you were going to use this time of uh, the, the loving time for the, that's going to be for the mm -hmm. summer. Um, to connect, you know, to get to connect deeper and get to know each other better. And a lot of people would, would think, oh, hmm. they have, probably haven't been together very long. How long have you guys been married? 36 years. So I just wanted to point that. No, when somebody, because you should yeah. always be working on your relationship to make it better and stronger. And, yeah. you know, I mean, we have a lot of fun together and we really enjoy each other's company, which boggles my mind that a lot of people don't get that or they don't yeah. have that in their relationship. It's a constant thing. If you want your relationship to work, you can't get sedentary. You can't sit yeah. still and just go, oh, well, I'm married now. It doesn't work that way. No, I, I had a, a, a long-term relationship um, that lasted for seven years, and it came to a very harmonious, loving end. You know, it had a cycle. But uh, we would get together once a year, and we'd leave all technology aside, and we'd go out into nature, and we'd spend that day going, 
okay, so how is this working for you? This is how it's working for me. Yeah. Let's talk about, you know, That's do we want to do this for another year? Yeah. You know, what do our goals look like? That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, that, but we would have this completely uninterrupted you and me time to, to do that. Right. And to just, you know, and not that you shouldn't do it more than once a year, but to have, but to have a day that says, I want to check in on how you're doing and we're doing, yeah. and I want to share how I'm doing because the world gets crazy sometimes. Yeah, and so sure does. Things get missed. Yeah. So, Dorothy, it's been two years. No, oh my God, hardly seems like it. I know. And I just wanted to correct you. You said there's only one of you, but you are a Gemini, so you can say us. I say you we can say all we. the time. I'm like, oh, where did that show up? It's my team. How's that? It's, right. it's, it's your team. Right. It's, it's my your team. team. That's the way I took it. Yeah, yeah. Dorothy, we wish you the best of Absolutely. luck. You and I will yeah. still be communicating Absolutely. and seeing each other. Dorothy and I have known each other for uh, over 15 years, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, Hillsborough times. Yeah, so a long time. Yeah. And um, and we're excited that you Welcome. have agreed to take this seat permanently. Yes. It's a good fit. Fits me well. It's a good fit. Yeah, you guys are good. <laughs> yeah. So we have a summer of psychic loving coming up. And we have a head that's going to blow up and blow out your possibilities <laughs> and your potential. And along the way, the universe is going to roll you out to make you the best pie crust you've ever been. Namaste.